Hello everybody, this is David. In this video, I'm going to show you how to drive RGBs uh, with pulse width modulated signals, specifically on the Cora Z7. It has two RGB LEDs on it. So I'm in Vivado. I created a, a project for the Cora Z7 and the target language is Verilog. Now before I show you the code, I'm going to take you over to the Cora Z7 reference manual and look at some stuff in there. Okay, so here's the reference manual. In particular, we're under the tricolor LEDs area. Um, so there's a, a signal for each LED. You can look at it right here. Um, so we're going to drive each signal the color that we want, of course, right? And if you drive different colors, then you're going to mix colors and make different colors. But it says right here, Digilent strongly rec recommends using pulse width modulation when driving the tricolor LEDs. Because driving any of the inputs with a steady logic one will result in the LED being illuminated at an uncomfortably uncomfortably bright level. Now I've done this and yeah, it's really bright. It says this can be avoided by ensuring that none of the tricolor LEDs are driven with more than a 50% duty cycle. I even drove it with a 50% duty cycle and it was still really bright. So let me take you over to the code and show you what I did. Okay, back in Vivado, I just have one module, it's RGB driver and the constraints file. So coming in, we have the clock, and then out is the RGBs for LED 0 and LED 1 on the Cora. So I create a counter that can count up to uh, 99, 0 to 99, so 100. And then some wires for PWM 30, 20, and 10 for to represent the duty cycle. And here's the logic for the counter. It's just a basic counter. Uh, if we get to 99, we'll reset it back to zero. Otherwise, we'll increment increment at the pause edge clock. Now, here's how you create the, the pulse width modulation. So that counter, if the value is less than 10, we're going to set this value high, otherwise zero. So when the counter is from zero to nine, so 10 ticks, it's going to be on. And then from 10 to 99, another 90 ticks, it's going to be off. So just essentially created a 10% duty cycle there. And we do the same thing for the 20 and the 30. As, as long as the counter is less than 20, we'll drive this one high. Less than 30, we'll drive this one high. Otherwise, they'll be off. And so I'm driving just the outputs of each RGB LED with a different PWM signal. I'm going to just create two different colors. So I'm driving a zero to the red here. I'm driving the two highest PWM signals to G and B to create an aqua. And then down here, I'm um, driving red and green to make yellow and leaving the blue off. Now let me show, show you, uh, let me show you the constraints file first. Here's the, the, uh, the clock signal coming in and then there's six signals for the RGBs for two different um, RGB LEDs. Now let me show you it working. Okay, here's the Cora Z7. It's programmed up, I'm trying to block my light, but you can see LED 0 is an aqua color and LED 1 is a yellow color. If if you were to drive these with any higher signals or a straight one, they would be it would just be so bright like you can't even look at it with your bare eye. But um but there that's how you drive uh, RGBs using pulse width modulation in Verilog. Thanks for watching.